So good morning. I'm Suliana Manley. It's really a pleasure to be here to talk to you this morning. I, I'm going to tell you a, sort of the personal side of my career, which is, um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm very passionate about science to have, have stayed in, in science uh, for more than half of my life. But, um, you know, I think part of why you're here is to explore the possibilities in terms of your career. And I thought that understanding the personal side of uh, some academic careers could, could help you to delve into this side of yourself as well. So I start with this question, which is why did you leave paradise, which is maybe exaggerated in some ways, but for many of us um, in science, part of being in science is, is mobility. And so many of us are, are not from Geneva. How many, how many of you are from Geneva, I would, I would wonder? Okay, so a handful of you, maybe less than 10. Um, from Switzerland, okay, and um, from Europe. So still about half of you are from outside of Europe, which means that you've, you've come quite a way um, to follow your dream. And um, so I, I really did leave paradise. No, I'm just joking. I mean, home, home I think, for many of us is, is a sort of paradise in the sense that Culturally speaking, it's like stepping into a warm bath. People understand you. You understand them. The food is what you expect it to be. Um, but I, you know, I left Hawaii back in uh, 1993, which is a while ago, to go to university. And I chose Texas for whatever strange reason of adventure, a combination of adventure and seeking um, an excellent place to learn and uh, learn about physics and math in that in that in that moment in time. <clears throat> I after that I went to a, onto a, a PhD at Harvard uh, where I studied physics, followed by two postdocs, first in chemical engineering, then cell biology. Um, from there I landed here in Switzerland. So I've constantly been moving. I can't really see my own slide, but. Um, constantly been moving eastward, um, and maybe eventually I'll end up in Siberia. <laughs> um, and recently I've been uh, promoted to associate professor here, so I, it's more likely that I'll stay in Switzerland than, than move on at this point. Um, so you might look at this trajectory and say, wow, it looks really linear, you know, both in direction and in, in um, career direction. Uh, but I would say that this map is a bit misleading because at each of these kind of turning points, which is this, when you step from one stage to the next, I, I really questioned a lot. And um, so, you know, I, my, my path is really not linear, and I'm, I'm happy to talk to you individually more about each of these uh, pauses in my... So I get this question a fair amount, which is, do you, did you ever question your path? And the answer is yes, absolutely. At each of these stages, I questioned... Um, both what I was capable of doing, whether I was the right person to be doing this, and um, um, you know, so what I, from the in, internally, what I did I want to do this enough, and and was it the right thing for me? And on the other side, could I do it? Would there be an opportunity for me to continue doing what I was doing? And I think that um, you don't know the answer, and you, and you can't know the answer a lot of the time. And you have to take it with a sense, sense of adventure. And what I ask instead is, is there something I would rather be doing? And to, to really know the answer to this, I think it's important um, to know yourself uh, in part. But anyways, I, you know, for example, I, I still have this, this relic or reminder of my own questioning at the stage of when I was finishing my PhD, which is a, about a year before I finished my PhD, I started wondering what I was going to do next. And so I, I went to a bunch of career sessions like this one, um, and I uh, picked up this book, Outside the Ivory Tower, and it's a very self-exploratory book about, uh, which allows you to ask questions to yourself and kind of analyze what is it that you like and what is it that you don't like. Um, I would say a couple of um, things about my, my slide in particular. So this is these are my parents. Um, so I grew up on a farm in Hawaii, and 
it was, so it was very far from academics. I didn't really understand what science was about. I just knew that I, was very, I felt very passionate about physics. Um, and it, it was only um, actually in graduate school when I started working for my PhD advisor that I started to understand what, it, what science was as a career. Um, so this was very late, uh, and I, I think that you, by being here, are, 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 are much farther along than I was at that the point in, in sort of mid-grad school, figuring out what a scientific career could look like. Um, and part of what um, convinced me to remain in science at the end of my, my PhD, and at least to, to see what, what, could, what would come next and what I would be capable of next, um, was that at some point my advisor turned to me and he said, you know, Suliana, it's important that you stay in science. And this wasn't something that had occurred to me. Um, I was very much in, my, in myself, I would say. And a lot of times in science we think, oh, you know, we're doing something which is so abstract, it doesn't really do much good for the world. Um, but what he pointed out to me and what has remained a very large part of what I consider to be my mission in science is that, you know, well, in my department there, there are two females out of about 40. So, um, you know, at, the, at, this, at this rate of being at less than 10%, we really can make a difference in terms of changing societies by, um, by not dropping out. <laughs> um, so that, that was one thing that, that uh, spoke, resonated with me at that moment in my career when I said, oh, you know, wouldn't I be better off farming or <laughs> gardening or, you know, doing something which is more socially uh, uh, oriented? And I, so I, I found that, in fact, you know, in many different careers, you can incorporate aspects which are not considered the core of that career. So I would, I would keep that idea in mind, which is that your personal mission can in include many aspects of what, is what are important to you beyond just, I want to discover the next X, which is how science is often presented. Um, so part of, part of my search was in the, in the next stage was to, to find female mentors. And so I worked for Jennifer Lippincott Schwartz as you know, obviously her science drew me, but also seeking mentors at this point. But yes, indeed, I, I did consider things like patent law and technical consulting was, as I was finishing my PhD. So um, what things might I change? Um, I, so I, I, I wrote these slides yesterday, and I would change from, you know, I would change the slide, actually. <laughs> so I would change it to from learn from mentors to seek mentors at each stage. So it's, it's um, you know, part of why I, I, I felt, uh, well, I actually told my advisor, you know, maybe I'll, I'll be a gardener, because I, I love gardening, and, and I know gardening. <laughs> That's the other aspect of it. I knew gardening because I, I, was in a, I was in a garden my whole life. And so um, how do we become expert in a field or a career that we don't, aren't born into is, you know, that you should seek mentors who speak to you and your experiences that allow you to understand how you might progress along that path and enjoy that career path. Um, and part of this also for me was adopting the processes that these experts were using because, again, this, this, you know, the opposite of the warm bath is an icy cold bath. And <laughs> for me, this, this was a lot of these, these different steps along my career felt a little bit like that because I was getting out of my comfort zone. But part of acquiring uh, expertise in a career is understanding what the processes are that people who are successful in the field are using. Um, so, rather than trying to learn intuitively, understanding what particular processes people use in the career, in the job search, for example, what is the academic job search? It's not just writing an application and sending it in. There's a lot more that's to it, and I think Howard's going to speak about that later. Um, the other half is understanding yourself, what you like or you, you dislike, what, what, is, what is important to you that you would like to incorporate into your career. Um, and then finally, um, something that I think is, is important at every stage of your development is to ask for feedback 
because a lot of times our people are reluctant to spontaneously give feedback and then to incorporate it. Um, so I'm gonna close at this point just um, mentioning some of the things that I have found most challenging in my career. Um, and you'll note that um, doing great science was not one of them. Doing great science is always the reward um, for me and part, a, a great part of the reason why I stayed um, in this career path. But many of the challenges were more to do with culture or gender, things that um, you know, come from coming from elsewhere to a place that has its own thing going on. A two career issue and then balancing family and career. So these are all things that I didn't have time to go deeply into, but I'm, I'm happy to talk to you at the break or answer any questions at this point.